Hello. Um, we're just looking at the. Uh, this is. I've got the um, secondary focuser from the big telescope that I've renovated, the JW24 John Wall 24 inch telescope. Um, the primary mirror is. Well, I don't know if you uh, remember me working on it a few years ago, but the primary mirror is 24 inches. Um, it's a folded. Cassegrain design, so the secondary mirror, which is uh, um, parabolic, or oh, actually, it's um, uh, yes, it is. It's parabolic. It's a it's a, a convex parabolic mirror. Um, I've actually got here, and this is the holder. Um, let me just show you the mirror. Um, the mirror itself is here. So um, a lot of people that um, get involved in uh, making telescopes start off with this sort of size mirror but that's for the primary mirror so an 18 this is an 8 inch mirror um, so that's quite a decent sized primary mirror but this is in fact the secondary mirror from this telescope bearing in mind that the primary mirror is 24 inches in diameter it's pretty big it's around about 600 millimeters uh, 0.6 of a meter it's a big mirror and it weighs a lot now this is the secondary mirror so this is the one that's at the sky end um, and um, uh, all made by John Wall, of course. Uh, he was a very clever man. Unfortunately, died last year. Uh, but um, I actually modified the way that the mirror support works. What I did is that um, I created the, the the bolts that were in there. I made these little sort of top hat sections, as you can see here. Um, there are some springs on there which help tension, basically take the backlash out of this screw. The screw's got a bit of as you can see a little bit of wobble in there and this this spring just helps take that out so it's a sort of backlash compensator is the spring so just ignore the spring for the moment but there's a little top hat or rather a, you can see there's a sort of um, um, groove inside the end of the bolt now that groove fits into these mounting posts these mounting points so if you can see here there are these mounting points here that those go into and then there's a little uh, set screw uh, which goes into the channel so what happens is that the nut is is, is held in there it's trapped in there uh, and when you rotate the nut which is threaded or rather the bolt the bolt which is in this uh, mount when you rotate that uh, this goes in and out and the and because of the spring it keeps it sort of pushed tensioned away and because of the free mounting points it allows you to collimate the mirror so you can tip it whichever way you want by doing it now what stupid me did is I didn't think where the set screw things were when I mounted them so these are actually uh, glued on with RTV uh, uh, which is um, a vulcanized um, uh, basically um, uh, silicon uh, room room temperature vulcanized silicon RTV stands for room temperature vulcanized so it's vulcanized um, silicon rubber um, and this sticks like well like if you want to be crude like shit to an army blanket there's no way that those are coming off uh, how, the, how you get them off I really don't know um, you, I mean you'd always just try and slide a blade underneath but I've had a go at one of them because I thought I'd get them off um, and they are not coming off so I'm gonna have to do something um, with them in situ now the problem is that stupid old Meese mounted them with the set screws not facing outwards they should have been all being facing outwards so that you can get to them and one of the problems is that very occasionally if we've been adjusting it um, this comes out and you have to put it back in and you can see where that, that set screw is you can't get to it with the, with the allen key bearing in mind that it's the plate is right behind it like this so what I'm going to do is re-drill this is a 3mm tapped hole in this in these uh, top hat sections here so I'm going to re-drill the holes on the outside and make some long thumb screws that stick out the side so that we can get to them or actually I might just just do them on the outside because you can get them to them easily then with an allen key so that's my plan um, now the, the, the biggest challenge is of course this is a silvered mirror um, and although the silvering is a little bit um, not perfect around the edges um, because of damp and stuff um, I can't touch that surface. It's a surface silvered mirror. It's not. It's not like a mirror you have in your bathroom, which um, is silvered on the back, so the glass protects it. This is the the silvering on this mirror is on the front. Otherwise, you would get ghost images. All telescopes are, are made that way with the silver. In fact, 
same as um, the mirrors in um, SLR cameras and that sort of thing. They're all sil surface silvered mirrors and it's very, very fragile. Although it's got some coating on it to protect it, it you can't touch it. You can't, you can't put it down, you can't put it on a cloth or anything because it will damage it. So everything I do has to be done by me holding the edge um, as carefully as possible. Um, if I break this mirror, that would be really, really bad. Not just the seven years bad look, but a lot more than that because to remake this mirror um, with the right curve and everything else would be uh, not good. So, I'm going to be doing this very, very carefully. So what I'm thinking of doing is just um, basically filing a little flat on the outsides of these and then very carefully with um, a hand drill just drilling, um, start off with a little pilot to get it in the right place. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to even use a center pot because I don't want to put any shock into this glass. I know it's thick but um, with John, John's um, mirror making and glass making you're never quite sure what the glass is and if there's any stresses in it or anything like that. I don't want to release those uh, suddenly. So I'm just going to file a flat. Um, I might just uh, use a, a very, very, very light centre pop and then start with a small centre drill and just get a little divot started and then I should be able to drill it carefully by hand and then tap it for the, for the M3. So um, let's give it a go. Okay, so let's just get that, get those two level there, about there, and this is, that must be facing the edge, so just a little room with the file on there. This is essentially filing, I think it is. I just want to do that enough to, to give me something to drill into really. There's a flat cut forming. Right, there we go. So we've got a bit of a flat on there. So I'll go ahead and file the other, the other two as well. So that's about level there. Let's, uh, this is a, a Swiss uh, style uh, file with safe edges on both sides, as you can see. Um, so uh, it's not sort of putting big chowder marks into the back of the back of the top hat. In theory, not that it matters if I do, but uh, I just want to get a flat on there so they can maybe get a little centre pop mark on there. Enough just to stop the drill wandering at least. Right, that's uh, it's not very flat in there, isn't it? Well, it's easier than said than done, filing a flat on something that's round and making sure it's flat. Especially when it's bobbling around like this. Yeah, that'll do. Let's go a bit. And then last one is this one here. So that's about level there. Oh, I've turned it the wrong way. So let's go around this way because I've already done that one. Ah, right, now that's slightly different there. So we're going to do that upwards that way. So that's about level. So this is the last one. There we go, we've got the three flats, so let me just uh, lean that up carefully and I shall uh, get a centre pop and we'll see what we can come up with. Right, I've got a very small sharp one there, which may well be what I need. I might actually just start with, this is actually a scriber. Uh, no, I'll start with the centre pop. I might have a small hammer. Okay. A little jeweler's hammer here, which um, is quite sweet. I don't use it very often, but for this sort of thing, could well be what we need. So, somewhere in the middle of there. That's about right, about there. Let's get a pop. 
as you can hear it's banging the glass but there we go we've got a mark can you see it let me just hold it up so you can see we've actually got a center pop and I think that might just do it so let me go around and do the others so I get that on there that in the middle that like that That's about right. That's got a decent little centre pop mark there. And hopefully without hitting it too hard um, as to uh, cause any problems with the glass or the other things themselves. I moved slightly, but that's okay. And that's the third one, so that seemed to go quite well. So let's uh, have a go at drilling it now right as you can see I've got a pretty small centre drill in there I don't know which number or number it is but uh, it's pretty dinky um, and the reach isn't great but it's enough that I can get in here so what I'm going to try and do is just get that started on there um, fingers crossed it should work It's certainly got to start. I think I'll do so. I'll, I'm going to move around and do the next one. Okay, so on to the next one. Look if you can see properly there. Let me see if I can get you in a bit closer. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether I will be able to. Let me just have to take my word for it. So here comes the next one. So that's that one. And down to the last one. Not quite in the pop mark on that one. There we that one okay let's go and get a slightly bigger drill just put that there so that was the uh, little bitty uh, pilot drill still in one piece Mir miracle because the tips of those just like breaking off as you know right um, so, right, so what we're doing There's a 2.1 here, which is an absolutely a brand new drill, never been used. So. That's better. So, unfortunately, the 2.5 is quite used because uh, that's for the that's the tapping size for M3. So, right. So that's one down. Next one. This one here. Second one, I will have obviously take them out to 2.5 in a moment, but that's uh, that's the sort of 
So that's the three done at 2.1 mil. So let's just take the 2.5 through. So that's all three done. Right, so all I'm doing there is just tapping, tapping uh, for uh, M3. Now this is actually a broken tap, but um, it's a nice Presto one, and uh, I think it's long enough. Even it's broken to cut a decent uh, a decent thread. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me just go and get a uh, an M3 screw, and we'll try it in there for size. Threes. Let's just get a really long one so you can get your fingers on it. I might actually just use some quite long ones like this because it means that they'll be easier to uh, deal with on the, on the telescope. There we go. It yeah, probably doesn't need to be quite that long. But that's going in nicely. Quite tight, which is good. And that's going to work well, that's nice and tight in the hole, and it's poking out now. So that'll go into the top hack nicely. And we can get to it from the side with a nice, simple uh, Allen key, screwdriver type Allen key, which will be nice and easy. So, come on down. Two to go. Let's get that out. Just don't leave that there for a moment. Okay, so next one, this one here. That one started. So as I say, this is a broken tap, which uh, might be better off actually getting a. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get a proper tap out because this is not starting very well. Because as you can see, look, it's, it is actually broken off. I thought it'd be quite good because it's because it's uh, short, but I don't think I really need that. That shortness to be uh, to work out that for like that. So that's good. Ah, I've got a replacement. There you go. There's an M3. That's a uh, that's a Dormer M3. There we go. Put that back in there. That should fit in here as well. Yeah, it does. So actually. what we need. Okay, so here we go. Second time, that's better. So that started. You can see all right there. Yep. Yeah. just started there. Yep. Yeah. That doesn't look very straight to me. That's the only problem with the uh, Something like this is getting it in straight, just nothing to guide it. That's better. We've got it straight this time. Normally, I do this in the uh, milling machine so you get a nice straight start, but uh, when you're doing things like this by hand, if you're not careful, you can get them in a bit of a wonk. Uh, that looks like it's fine.
Okay, that's two done. Let's get to the third one. Well, what been done with the third one here. Okay, so last but not least. Might have done with a bit of lube this, but I didn't want to use lube particularly because uh, I don't want to mark the, the mirror. So that's all of them done. Okay. Right, I'm just going to get some compressed air and we'll blow them out. Right, as you can see I've got um, all three screws in and ready, so let's get the, uh, the actual mount back and we'll start off with this first one here and very carefully swing it into position and see if, right, there we go, that's it, that's on, that's it, because I think the way I stuck them on is that I had them actually in place when I stuck them on, so if there's any movement in the uh, movement it wouldn't be in too much trouble. Right, that one goes like that. Now, the trick is now to get this into the groove. Is that the groove? No. Right, so the groove's about there. Not long ago since I did this, I can't actually remember how I got this to work. Oh, there we go, that's that's the groove there. So just tiny it up and just back it off slightly that way. I should theoretically still be able to turn it, but I can't. Where is that one? So anyway, let's get the others screwed in. And then we'll worry about uh, the adjustment side of things. Right, so, that in like that. Getting that screwed up. Again, let's put it in too tight. You can no longer adjust it, that's the problem. But, So, that should allow me to adjust these, which it does. That's turning. That's tight. Let me just back this off a bit. Now that turns. Yep, that turns. We tend to use a spanner on these when we adjust them, so and the last one, a bit tight, back that off slightly. There we go. That's it, that turns now. Yep. I don't mind them being a bit tight. And there we go. They actually to do with undoing all of those. They're all it's too far out, I want to shorten that back slightly so. 
Okay, so I'm just going to bring these back a bit against here. Just turn, do sort of uh, one turn on each one just so we don't get any weird tensions in there. So that's it. So we know we've got, uh, we can adjust these, we can get to those with very easily with a spanner like that. So if we need to take the mirror off, we can do it quite easily. Um, I did actually mark it, can you see here? I marked it there before I took it off and uh, I forgot to uh, line those up the first time round. Anyway, so just a quickie there, um, we'll be able to get this mounted back on the big telescope. Uh, we'll be able to get it collimated again for, for the winter season and um, we shouldn't have any more problems um, that was a fairly quick job to sort out it definitely was well worth doing because um, last winter one of these came undone and we had to make a, a, a very very weird contraption to get the grub screw back in or the set screw back in um, with a piece of stick and some tape and we didn't have any tools with us and one of my colleagues it happened to again when there was no one there to help him and we had um, I think there were 20 uh, members of the public who turned up for a, uh, to look through the telescope and uh, and the mirror suddenly went boop like that and popped out of the mounting, uh, which uh, isn't good when you're just about to show uh, 20 uh, people uh, the night sky. So this is going to be a lot more reliable um, and what, uh, single handedly it's quite easy to adjust these now so we can keep the collimation where it needs to be. So uh, anyway, so thanks for watching. If you enjoy watching these uh, little uh, astronomy repairs or any of my uh, crazy projects that I seem to get involved in, then uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, and give it a thumbs up and uh, please leave me a comment. Um, I'm always very happy to uh, have comments and uh, I will try and reply to them. So thanks for watching.